It's time for Highlands basketball tonight from Plum High School. Section action as the Highlands Golden Rams visit the Plum Mustangs. Along with the Dean, Mike Choma, and Cameraman Dan, this is Mike Pavlik greeting you from high atop Mount Furco here at Plum. We named it after Frank. This is a long way up here. It's an expedition to get to the top of the gym. When I make it up, Mike, I make one trip down, one trip back, so I'm up here for the duration. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> right, and I can understand why. Okay, well, since we're so high up, we figured that tonight, pregame, we would kind of take a look Big picture at the Highlands basketball team and small picture. So let's start big picture, the 30,000-foot view. Halfway through the season, what do we have? Well, Mike, the pressure's on us. We lost the key game when we lost that game Friday to Mars, and uh, no one in the section is going to beat Mars. I can make that prediction safely. So we're going to have one more chance at them out there, and I think they did a very effective job on us uh, with their box and one on Jimmy. And, again, Coach Carmen, he's a smart guy. Trust me, we're going to see it again. So... I think we have one more bump in the road uh, with Shaler, out of Shaler. But again, like I said, big picture is taking care of business, going to have to find a way to beat Mars. Yeah, and I, it's uh, it's interesting that, that last year you kind of saw the same thing. They started 7-0 and last year and went 6-6 six and six after that. This year they've started 5-0 and and they've gone 3-4 and four after that. So something happening in the middle of the season where the malaise kind of fallen over top of them. I don't know exactly what it is, but I do know this going forward. There are three things you can control as a basketball player. Attitude, focus, and energy. Those things are in your control. And if, if, they, if this team does that, they are a good team that can beat anybody. So, you know, the Mars game happened. And, you know, talk about that. Well, Mars shot 26 foul shots, Mike. We shot six. And a lot of people would complain. I, I rewatched the game. Guess what? We committed those fouls. And, and we shot six. You know why? Because nobody went to the basket. If, if, if you're going to stand around and pass the ball around the perimeter, please don't complain you didn't get to the foul line. Exactly. We got beat man-to-man, -man, Mike. And uh, what happened a lot of times is you get beat off the dribble, you're reaching in. That's what they did. They shot all those fouls. And the other thing is uh, I don't think we did a very good job against that box and one. We have to get Jimmy active. Yes, he scored 20 points. But, again, for the most part, they were right in his shirt. And there, there are ways to beat that type of – uh, defense, and we're going to have to find a way because, trust me, everybody we're playing now watches the Mars tape for one simple reason. Mars beat them. Let's see how Let's they see did. how they did. Yep. Exactly. And we may see it here tonight for all we know. Yeah, so the, the Rams have kind of gone all Dow Jones on us, and now it's time that they need to start to put a streak together here. Um, against some of these other teams in the section. All right, let's talk about this Plum Mustang squad who had a very good year last year under coach Mark Marino. They were 9-6. and six. They finished legit fourth in the section. They would have made the playoffs anyway. They did get in. They um, beat West Allegheny in the first round, a very good opponent, uh, before they lost to Newcastle. So, But they lost a lot of seniors, and they're going to be here with a with – a, basically a brand new team tonight. Yeah, Mike, they've lost their last three games, but they scored 75 points against Elizabeth Ford in that last loss. They had four guys in double figures, and they're led by Connor Moss. He had 23. Nick Klinger had 18. Steve Vanchik added 14. Austin Herrera had 10. So that's four guys in double figures. They can score. Golden Rams better not sleep on them tonight, because like I said, it's all looking forward from this point on. You can't overlook anybody. you got to take care of it one night at a time. Each one. And speaking of, you can't sleep on anybody. They slept walk through the game here last year. They won it 53-50. to 50. In that game, the Rams were 9 for 29 from the free throw line. Now, it, we, <laughs> not going to get it done that way. It's not going to get it done. All right, are you or someone you know in need of physical or occupational therapy? Why not consider the caring therapist at Phoenix Rehabilitation and Health Services in Natrona Heights? Zach Bartolotta and his staff specialize in a one-on-one -on -one personalized care coupled with the latest techniques and equipment in physical therapy services. They deal with any type of injury, specializing in orthopedic conditions, including sports and workers' compensation injuries, shoulder injuries that will get you back on the golf course. Phoenix will help you with your goal of returning to the activities you love the most. No golfing this week, unfortunately, unless you're getting on an airplane. <laughs> Phoenix Rehab and Health Services is conveniently located at 1601 Union Avenue, Natrona Heights. They have flexible hours for your convenience, and they accept most insurances, including UPMC. So give them a call today to set up an appointment, 724-224-5090 for Phoenix Rehab and Health Services. All right, starting lineups and the tip-off. They're both coming up right after this. It's Highlands and Plum right after this. All right, time for the starting lineups tonight. Brought to you by Dan Timmons Painting to beautify and protect. Uh, dressed in the road, Brian and Goal will start zero. Chandler Timmons, 6'3", junior, averaging 7.6 per game. 
Number one, Jimmy Quinn, 6'2", junior, averaging 23 points per game. Cartelier wears 14, is a 5'11", senior, averaging 10.6 per game. 15 is Braden Foster, 6'8", sophomore, averaging 10.8 per game. And Cam Rygard, a Rigard, excuse me, a 6'0", sophomore, number 24, averaging 7.2. Four of our five starters are averaging double figures per game. Highness Compton averaging 70, giving up 52. Plum averaging only 45 under third-year coach Mark Marino. And they had 75 in their last game, Mike, so think about that. They will start zero. Adam Kotfuss, a 5'11 junior. Number one, Steven Ivanka, a 5'9 sophomore. And then the seniors come, Mike. Number three, Cameron Moss, 6'3 senior. 10, Austin Harita, a 6'2 senior. And the big guy in the middle, number 24, Nick Klingler, a 6'6 senior. Starting lineups, as always, brought to you by Dan Timmons Painting for all your commercial painting needs. They got you covered. So here we go tonight from Plum, high atop the Plum Gym, and uh, we are set to go. Uh, we had some snow finally, um, a lot of shoveling, a lot of sore shoulders and things, but I think we're uh, all in one piece. I know Dan loves the winter. Um, so. By the way, thanks. To Siler Stadler came up and helped me out yesterday. Uh, pays us some football players to live nearby, Mike. Yeah, I suppose it does. <laughs> I suppose it does. So the Rams are out there ready to go. The Mustangs 4-8, and 1-4 and four in section. Their only victory was a 46-27 win over Indiana. Highlands, of course, 8-4, 4-1 and, four, four and one in section. Their only section loss was, of course, Friday night to the Mars Planets. A game that saw Zach Schlegel score 24 points for Mars. 15 of those came from the foul line. He made more foul shots than Highland shot. Plum well, Mike streaky. They win their first three, they lose their next five, and they've been one and four since the beginning of the year. So opening tip's going to go to Highlands. Ball knocked out of bounds. Mark Marino in his third year, we mentioned. He formerly the coach at Brownsville and Hempfield. And let's see what they start out with defensively. Looks like a 1-3-1, one, one, Mike. Looks like it, and Jimmy Kunst has the basketball. This is Regard right side. Kunst out of the corner. Dumps it down low to Foster. Inside, puts it up off the glass and scores. So they got it inside nicely to Foster, and the Rams lead 2-0. Nice inside screening action by Chandler Timmons, too, Mike. Now Moss beats him all the way down and ties the game. Cam Moss, of course, we saw his brother Connor a year ago, and it's 2-2. He was their leading scorer, and I believe Cameron is leading them in scoring this year. Right he, back to Foster. He's playing at Kenyon, Division Three. Spin move by Kunst. It had a tip, but Foster able to control it in the corner. Got a man in the air. Drives through. Back outside to Leary. Leary down the paint. Lost control, but it came right to Foster, and it's blocked by Killinger. And here come the Mustangs left to right in their home white uniforms in a 2-2 tie. That time, Braden had not got good position, Mike. Oh, again, they work it into Moss, but he can't finish this time. Timmons the rebound. Timmons tries to dump it inside to Kunz. Jimmy able to control it, got fouled. He'll go to the line as Evgen Zykin, one of our three officials tonight, Jim Hastings and Tim Tyler, the other two. Jimmy actually got room rejected on that pass by Chandler. The room got in the way, but Jimmy collected it. And we got a line of shoot a pair coming in 70% on the year. He was shooting 80 not that long ago. He struggled. There we go. 3-2 Highlands just underway here at Plum on a Tuesday night. Rams will be out of section Friday. They will go to Freeport. So even though it's a non-section game, I'm sure they'll be ready for that one. Bundle up for that, Mike. Three degrees. Oh, well, at least it won't be three degrees inside. Jimmy makes them both. It's 4-2. That'll be a big night for Rich McCura. Highlands assistant who... Uh, Returning home. That's right. Coach Dan went to school at Freeport. But he teaches at Highlands. Taught at Highlands for years, so... Split allegiances. From the corner, that's Austin Harita with a three. And Plum leads at 5-4. Wide open Leary in the corner. His three's on the way, and it's good. Carter Leary's first, and that matches his output from Friday night. 7-5 Highlands. And it looks like he has the away shoes on tonight, Mike. Now back outside to Ivanchik. Here's Harita. 7-5, Highlands leads it. Off the move, it's Kotfuss. And Kotfuss is fouled. Nickel Dimer there with on the floor. Foster, yeah. Touched him up there. And 
We could be here all night if they're going to call that, Mike. <laughs> Files are one apiece. Work it inside with a little half hook, and that's Killinger. 6-6, six, six, Mike. He's their big man. They went inside to him off the inbound. Tied at seven. Kuntz wide open. His threes off the back rim. No good. Rebound Plum. Chasing it down in the corner was Harita. Overplay by Regard. He nearly stole it. Got a hand in there. And now Codfus controls. Codfus drives into the paint. Kicked it out. Tipped by Kunst out of bounds. Plum will retain possession. 534 left first quarter. Looks like Hines in a matchup here, Mike. Adam Codfus out top against Leary. Leary had foul trouble the other night. We had a bunch of guys. Leary, Tavares, Kunst. It really seemed to take Carter out of his game too, Mike. You normally very aggressive. And plus the, he got whacked in the eye yeah. and that didn't help. A little long double arm, vision there. Long, long arm with uh, Chris Dvorak did that. Ball's tipped out of bounds. Let's see Tim Tyler. It's Highlands basketball at 5.09. First turnover of the night. Highlands has been forcing 15 per game, committing 11. Mars did a great job of value and possession. It only had seven turnovers the entire game against Highlands. So you put that combination of 26 foul shots and seven turnovers, you're going to win most games, especially yes. at the high school level. Here is Kunst. Oh, nice pass to Timmons, and he put it in. Those two have had a bit of a good wavelength going together recently. And Chandler actually stepped in from behind the basket, Mike, for that one. Now Killinger with a short jumper, that's no good. I just wanted to run, had Leary head of the pack. Leary had, does have it now to Regard. Foster right side. Put it on the floor, and now Regard controls it. Rams by two early on. 9-7, I think, might have been the halftime score of the JV game. Regard open. Regard's three balls off the rim, no good. The rebound to Codfus. Kuntz got up there and stole it. Active hand. Regard, Regard tries to it. save it. He ends up in the fourth row. Cameron's always hustling. Plum will retain possession. That JV game, Mike, went down at the end. Tommy Counter made some clutch shots at the end of that game to seal the victory for the Golden Rams. He went down late, too. Hope he's all right. I think he got up all right. It's on the bench now, so. Here's Regard. Ball came up on him a little bit to Jimmy Kuntz around a Foster screen. Drives all the way to the basket, and it's blocked. Blocked by Harita. Plum wants to run. Godfus back the other way, and they throw it away. Off a hand out of bounds, it'll be Highland's ball. So a couple of unforced turnovers by the Mustangs here early, and Mark Marino's going to go to his bench. Here's Foster. Needs help. Out to Leary. And Timmons controls it. Oh, Timmons made a nice move and around Godfus and put it in. A pair of zeros going out at, at that time, and the Highlands zero won that battle. 11-7 Rams. Channel of four now. Codfus comes all the way down, and again, they throw it away. Again, those are unforced turnovers yeah. by Plum. Four quick ones. Griffin Oresic, number 30, comes in, and Jordan Tavares is in for Highlands. Jimmy brings the ball up. Here's Kunz. Trams with a four-point lead. 3.15 left first quarter. Regard in front of the plum bench. Now Leary lets it go and drains another three. He's got two, and the Rams lead at 14-7. And boy, that upsets Coach Marino, Mike, because he knew that's where he could hit. Nice steal by Kunz. Oh, can't get it to go. The tip by Regard is no good. Regard again, and he's fouled. He'll shoot two at 2.58. Coach Marino livid down there, Mike. He does a pretty good job of scouting teams. He knew that right from there, Carter Leary is deadly. And they turn the ball over for a fifth time. Regard going to go to the line and shoot a pair. Missed the first. Cameron came in 58% on the year. And now Mark Marino wants to take a timeout here. We'll do that too. Tell you about Phillippe's. 
Philippi's Family Dining and Pizzeria was born in Trenton Heights in 1999, and it didn't take long for the name to become synonymous with great food and overwhelming community support. Philippi's offers burgers, wings, specialty sandwiches, wraps, and of course pizza, and not just any pizza, but the often imitated, never duplicated Birdville pie. Named with that special super secret recipe, a name for the Birdville section of the Heights where Philippi's is located. Kitchen is open. On game night, stop by and say hi or call 724-226-3505 for takeout or order partially baked Birdville pie. And remember, they serve breakfast every morning starting at 8. As Philippi's Family Dining Pizzeria at Freeport Road in the Toronto Heights. And I was telling Mike before the game, January 28th, we will definitely be there because that's Hall of Fame night. We'll be inducting Kirk Watucky, Greg Kaprivnikar, and the guy to my right, Mike Pavlik. And the Philippi's was our old haunt back in those days. Sure was. Mike. So it'll be a coming home party for the inductees. Regard makes one out of two, and the Rams lead at 15-7. So stop by and say hello that night. We'll definitely be there. Yeah, we will. I'm going to reserve a couple tables. Uh, just Greg Kaprunov's car says he's bringing 18 to 20 people. The Wataki's have plans for eight, and uh, I got the hundreds of people coming on your beer. You're right, so. exactly. Well, uh, pack of the place. Birdville pie, by the way. That's that's my request. There you nice go. job to the basket by Moss to put it in, and it's 15-9. It's what I get every. I've never had anything else there because I always have the pizza. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, wings. I'm the same. I've way. had wings. Yeah. The wings are fantastic. I heard everything's good that arrived. Oh, oh, great well, pass. Leary, bang. Timmons, Foster, tic tac toe. Bingo, bango, bongo. My ball never touched the floor. My favorite sound the sounds of silence. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Simon. <laughs> Artie Garfunkel. Hello. You had Artie's hair once. Yeah, I did it one yeah. time. There's a six turnover. Mike Hyde is yet to turn over the ball. And they lead it by eight because Plum's turned it over six times and Highlands hasn't. Yeah. You had that as a key on Friday, and you were so right about that. One of the th things that played into it, it was how well Mars took care of the ball. Yeah, Highlands turned it over a dozen times, and he did seven. Here's Kunst around a Timmons screen. Used up the dribble, got it down to Foster. Foster's open, he put it in. And Braden's having a night early. He's got six early on, and the Rams lead it 19-9. The first time these two teams played at Highlands, Highlands blew Mar uh, Plum out, beat him 59-25, but then it was a lot closer in here. I look like playing a 1-3-1 one, one now. This is Oresic. Now Kotfus with a nice pass to Moss down low. He missed the shot, got his own rebound back. He's fouled. He'll shoot two at 131. Joe Lucchino and his son Joseph would like to welcome you to the Lucchino Insurance and Financial Group. Serving the AK Valley for decades, the Lucchinos are a broad-based financial advisory firm with a wide range of opportunities for both you and your business. I didn't check much past afternoon, but I bet their phone was ringing off the hook today. It was not the best day on Wall Street. While most of us are trying to navigate the new normal, now more than ever we realize the importance of family and trying to protect them. Life insurance is an investment, so now would be a great time to Make sure your policies are still doing the things they were intended to do. You can stop by the Lucinos for a free insurance review today because Joe and Joe always know. 724-224-8908, 724-905-7583. Why wait? Let the Lucino Insurance and Financial Group put you on the road to financial stability today. And the Rams collect a file. Moss made one out of two of those foul shots. Highlands now leads 19 to 10. And most savvy investors know not to follow the market day by day. I did not look at it today, and I guess I don't want to after just hearing from you. <laughs> now they work it inside, missed the shot, and Moss has the rebound. Garden Variety down 543 for the Dow. There is uh, Timmons going in, and he's going to go to the line. So the Rams are going to get some trips to the stripe, which is a good thing if they can make some. Again, they, they're already doing better tonight than they did a year ago at the line in this building. So that's a, we, you don't want to wipe that out of your mind. Three out of four so far. For now, the, you, you know it's true. There were some places that just fit your eye better than other places when it comes to shooting the ball, right? Yep. And again, not much of a background here. Most shooters like to have a background, like we're right where the basket is close to the wall. Timmons, Leary, and Foster all have broken five points here early on. 20 to 10, Highlands by 10. Chandler had a huge third quarter Friday night. Scored nine in a row. And one out of two, Oresic the rebound. Also in the game, Sean Franzi, number 35 for the Mustangs. It'd be another turnover having there, right? trouble yeah. with it. Backcourt, what's the seconds. call? 10-second call. 
You know, the Highlands defense so far, you know, in some cases has been too much for Plum to handle, but Plum's been a lot of unforced turnovers too. Not that one. That was a good Red job by up, Highlands, yeah. Turn up. Signorella in a game along with Khalil Long. So the first eight have all appeared. This is Tavares. Signorella hands it off to Foster. Needs some help. Back to Tavares. 45 seconds left first quarter. Nice still that time. That was. Moss turnover. stepped in front beautifully and took it away. Cam Moss forecourt. Back to Franzi. Now to Ivanchik. Franzi will set it up. 30 seconds. He's a football player, Mike, right? Yep. Franzi. Arrow belongs to Plum, and they throw it away. Just a ghost pass. Threw it right to Cam Regard. Unfortunately, he's on Highlands and on the bench. <laughs> 25 seconds left of the quarter. Tavares with the crossover. Now Foster. A 1 4 set. You don't see Khalil on the point very often. Inside to Foster. He's there again. Mike. Backs arrest again. Can't get it to go. They're not going to call Khalil over the back. Yep. Over the back. That'll be team foul number three for Highlands. First on long. Plum's committed four. Six seconds to go. They won't shoot. And they got to go to the length of the court. And quickly, Mark Marino runs Austin Harita into the lineup. He's made the only three tonight for Plum. And Mike, they also have the error, so they're going to get a two for out of this. This is Codfus. Five seconds, four. Gets the center court. Now lost. Good if it goes. Dipper. Rebound Foster. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. Highlands 20. And Plum 10. Guess what? Winter came this week. It sure did, and there was a line at Highland Tire for sure, so there's no better time than today to stop at Highland Tire and Highland Integrity Alignment, see why they've been voted best in about AK value by tires since 1993. Oil changes since 95, and voted number one in auto repairs. Highland Tires offers one of the largest and most complete inventory of tires and custom wheels in the entire Pittsburgh area. If you don't see it on site, they'll order it for you. Visit HighlandTire.com or give them a call and turn them at 724-224-9222. In the Heights at 724-224-7900 or Highland Integrity Alignment at 724-224-5900. Highland Tire service integrity price is 1961. We deliver. By the way, PennDOT has done something very nice for Highland Tire. Mm -hmm. They haven't touched Freeport Road. So you can go out and test your tires on a complete snow pile out there. I don't know why, Mike. Uh, so, Sunny Boulevard drives a bone. Freeport Road, all four lanes. So that, is a, so that is a state road, then, is yes. what you're saying. So that, that kind of works that way in Lower Burl, too, where Leechburg Road is actually a state road. However, there is an agreement between the state and the city of Lower Burl that Lower Burl will clear Leechburg Road, and that's how that works. Well, Freeport Road is a Highland Tire test track. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. Plum with the ball starting the second quarter. They trail it by 10. Highland's attacking that inbound. Got the sophomore guards out there, Regard and Tavares. And they're going to get Jordan. Could be a little too tight. Yeah. yeah. Close Tim, ride there. Tim Tyler with a call. In section night, Mike, we've got uh, Mars hosting Hampton, and we have Armstrong at Indiana. Steal by the Rams. Here comes Kunz the other way. They're going to say a travel. Yeah, Mike. Really? He tried to get the Euro stepped in, but there was no place to land it. He could not stick his landing, as they would say, and therefore travel. I think that was the proper call. Okie dokie. Second Highlands turnover. Now they'll go to full court pressure. Try to speed Plum up a little bit. We always talk about tempo. This is Ivanchik. Over to Franzi. Now, oh, the Rams nearly strip it. Signorella's on the floor. They battle for it. Signorella gets a timeout. Great job by him to get on the floor and get it away from Killinger and steal it. And Highlands has the basketball and a timeout. That'll be the 11th turnover so far. We're only 724 into the second quarter. 
Now, the Boucher agencies recently made some major changes with you and your family in mind, and now they're even better equipped to handle your home and auto insurance needs. The Boucher's are now independent agents. In addition to Nationwide, they're now working with all the leading companies in the industry to find more ways for you to save on your home and auto insurance. Hey, Coach Albert. Call your hometown independent agents, John and Nick Boucher, 724-224-4300, to choose the coverage that's right for your family. They've been being at Saturday hours for your convenience. Remember, in the AK Valley, you're in good hands with the Boucher agency on your side. And Coach Albert uh, has uh, John Boucher on his side, certainly. And Mike, it's official. We will be in their conference next year. I'm trying to pull the conferences up for you. Sam says we we'll love the, we will love the press box. I like that idea. So. Looking forward to that. That'll be a new one, and North Catholic will be new. Great pass. Kunst took long, and he lays it in. Now, Jimmy threw a bullet in there. He looked like he was playing shortstop, firing his second on the force play. 22-10. It'll be the Northern Conference, Mike, in 4A. It'll be Armstrong, Mars, Hampton, Indiana, Highlands, all old ones, adding North Catholic and Sam Albert's Kiski area. How about that? And they haven't done the schedule yet, Mike. They won't so how out. many teams is that team? Is that? I think it's seven. Two, four. We're going to have a seven. lot of. Well, we don't play knock anymore. We might catch them non-conference. Double driving to the basket was caught because he missed it. Franzi the rebound for the Mustangs. There's Freeport, Burrow, Valley. Yeah, there's plenty yeah. of teams that uh, hopefully they'll keep it close again. That part they haven't decided yet. Seth Favero with a dipper. Rebound tipped. Yeah, we get to schedule probably sometime in the spring. They're, they're polling the coaches as to how they want to do those other games. I think they did a great job bringing back the locals, yeah. locals and early. Kunst from way downtown. He nails there you it. Go, Jimmy from for way downtown, 30 feet away. His first three tonight gives him five. And the Rams lead at 25 to 10. Yeah, Mike, there's nothing worse than week nine of 10. Get Ringle in a non-conference game. Yeah, ask Sam about that when you get a minute. We were talking about the uh, outstanding running back. He always called him Reggie, but... Uh, Roger Jackson. Yeah, he got hurt in that game. He did, he got concussed, I think. And it hurt his ankle. Yeah. There were two injuries. Shot is missed. On the turnaround by Killinger and the rebound to Highlands. Here comes Kuntz back the other way. Cross court to Foster, thought about it. Regard in the corner, Timmons. But they double-team him. Out to Leary. He's open. His three is off the rim. No good. Rebound tipped, and Regard chases it down. Great pass. Talk. Leary goes in. It won't go, but he's fouled. Here's how I talk about energy, Dean. You see them how they're getting the loose balls? Yes. I mean, that's, you know. What I liked about Cameron that time, Regard, when he got the ball, Mike, he was going away from the basket, but he, he passed it towards the basket. He contorted his body to give Leary that first step in. Carter took advantage. He's on the line for a pair. 80%. First is good. And that foul was on. I can't remember anybody shooting 80% since uh, since Damon Porter's junior year. He shot like he shot up a 90% his junior year. Killinger picks up his second foul. Well, we jinxed him. I did. One out of two. 26 to 10. Oh, great pass into Moss, off the glass, off the run, it's no good. Rebound, Ivanchik puts it up and in. Steve Ivanchik's first basket of the night, and it's 26-12. Regard found Foster for three. Off the front rim, but there's Timmons. Timmons goes back up and scores. Offensive rebound and the putback, Chandler Timmons with seven, and it's 28-12. Now Favero got it inside to Moss with the lay-in. Moss had posted himself up in there. They found him. Highlands right to the basket. Cameron Regard. Ball's tipped out of bounds. And Evgen Zykin says that ball belongs to Highlands at 4.56 second quarter. The Rams lead at 28-14. They've doubled him up. Leary. Spin move by Kunst. Back to Titmans. Kunst drives in, and we're going to get a little reach in. Yeah, many hands on him. Jim Hastings with the call. I figure I finally figured out who Jim Hastings looks like. Hmm. If you watch the show Gotham on Fox, it was the it was a Batman show. 
And there was one of the, and I can't remember the name of the guy, but he was one of the one of the mob guys in Gotham City. <laughs> That's who Jim Hastings looks like. Cotfus picks up his second. Jimmy out there ready to trigger. I get a name on that. Leary. There is Carter Leary from the corner. Three times three is nine, and the Rams lead it 31-14. He's got 10 of the 31. Trap at midcourt. Got through it. Yeah, Moss, and Moss is open. Oh, boy, he's Too missed a easy. couple of bunnies. He finally gets that one to go, though. There are no Rams on him. He's got nine. 31-16. Foster had a man in the air. Now it's tipped out of bounds, and Highlands keeps it. Good hustle by Resick. Mentioned in section tonight, Mike Shaler. Last night's game against Brashear was canceled. They do not have a section game tonight. They're going to go to Indiana on Friday night. And again, we mentioned we'll be in Freeport. Right, because section will begin the second half Friday, but look at that, Mike. we're out first <laughs> night. Yes. It was either Timmons or Jimmy's pass. Oh, nice move by Foster, but he, he just couldn't get that little extra it on it, and then he nearly had it again and lost it. Now the Mustangs have a break. Three on one to Moss. Great pass that time by Ivancic. Good hands by Moss to handle that. He's got 11 and 31-18. Jimmy Kunst all the way through. It's the stop-start move. It won't go for him, though. Foster the rebound. And knifed out of there by the Mustangs. Here they come two on two. Ivancic dribbles it around and stops and pops. It's a dipper. Good Rebound Foster. Timmons ahead of the pack. Whoa, whoa, boy, did he get up there. The Kunst, oh, what a beautiful play that was. By Chandler saved that play. Both Timmons and Foster did a great job to get the ball to Jimmy. He gets his seven. And now they nearly steal it backcourt. What's the call? Timeout. timeout for Mark Marino. A good timeout because they it were going to have a 10-second count. That's for sure. Yeah, get a chance to talk about B&E. Don't you hate it when you need work done around the house but can't get anyone to call you back? Or even worse, you finally get in touch with someone and they don't finish the job properly? Well, put those problems aside because b &E Home Renovation has been executing home projects in the AK Valley from start to finish for over a decade. If you're spending your hard-earned money on renovating your home, you expect the job to be done right the first time. Not only does b &E do it all, from basements to roofing, they also bring a refreshing level of professionalism to every job on the very first call. Experience the difference today. Call 724-351-3172 or visit our Facebook page and take the first step in making your home a better place to live. Beanie Home Renovations, where the bee is always busy. Their truck's been flying around the heights, Mike. They've been busy. Great job by Dan to get a shot of a lot of our fans out there. I was got you start naming them off one at a time, but would have taken. They knew who they are. I saw Dan and Liz. Chandler's mom and dad. Saw them up there. Saw Kathy and Tom, Jimmy's parents. Nice pass underneath, but unable to finish it was Oresic, and the Rams come the other way. I guess uh, Kathy's sister got back to Canada. Here is Regards three off the rim twice. He gets his own rebound and picks up the garbage. He knows where it was coming, Mike. Cameron now had three. Oh, nearly a steal. Rams lead at 35-18. Matches their biggest. Here's Franzi. Out against Regard. You get a rough ride there. Inside to Moss. Got a man on the floor. Put it up no good. And Tavares went down. And then he got his money's worth. He sure did, Mike. What happened was he thought he should have got the charge the first time. He jumped up and said, well, let's put a stop to this right now. And he... He nailed Mr. Moss. One thing you notice about Jordan, he has a bit of a temper, doesn't he? He sure does. And uh, sometimes good, sometimes <laughs> not so good. Cameron Moss at the line, the 6'3 senior. Can we mention his brother, Connor Moss, averaged 19.4 a year ago. He is at Kenyon College playing. And they had another good guy here that we really like, Tarasi Means. Yes, and I they remember. they lost nice him. Kid, yep. He averaged 10 a game. They had a good year last year. They ended up 9-6. and six. They got off to a slow start, but Mark Marino's a good coach. Hey, he was 21-3 and three at Hempfield. That's not, too not, shabby, an easy, yes. not, a, not an easy place to win. 13 now for Moss. He leads all scores. 35-20, and what do we That's have? We have a foul against Highlands away from the basketball. Tim Tyler caught it. Foster. Oh, Leary, okay. 14, not 15. 
It would have been tough for Foster to get that foul sitting next to Christian Tanilla. <laughs> Fourth Highlands turnover. Gives him a chance to set up pressure, though. Ooh, that was oh, close to over Almost, huh? Yeah. Get your rule book out. Yeah. There's Steal turnover. by Tavares. Out to Kunst. He had Khalil nice Law breaking into the goal, and he put it in. Great no-look pass by Jimmy. Khalil has four. Highlands have 37 now. Two minutes to go here in the half. Right side, and Favero lets a three go. It's short and along the rebound. I wonder if he's any relation to the old Springdale coach, Don Favero. He was a great guy. He always had the best stats for you back in the 90s. And he coached girls some. He, uh, he was a championship girls coach at Deer Lakes. Yeah, I thought so, yep. And I believe Dana Patricia was on that team, Mike. It's very that? possible. Yep. So Kunst will go to the line and shoot a couple. That's on Codfus. He's picked up his third foul. Jimmy three for three tonight. He called in a score one time, and he told one of the reporters of the Valley that this team he saw was the best team east of the Mississippi. And they called the reporters in the coffee room, and they said, how do you spell Mississippi? And he said, the state of the river. <laughs> Jimmy missed the second, but... Khalil got the rebound, and they call a jump ball, and it's Highlands keeping it at 137. They lead 38-20. Yeah, those are tough questions, aren't they? I'm not a spelling uh, person myself. I leave that to others. Here's, here's Kunst. He stops. He pops. It's off the front rim, no good. Rebound, plumb. Coming out of there with it, Sean Franzi. Ooh, long drag of that pivot foot. Four court to Moss. Got through a couple of men, and... Khalil, the long arm of the law, out to Kunst. Here's Leary, who's hit three from downtown tonight. And we got a whistle. Before? Yep, three-second call against Highlands. Turnover, Rams at 113. And I believe that one was legit, uh, legit Mike, because Khalil Long was in there for a long time. And that's a big guy, you know, it's hard for him to hide. Mm -hmm. And Tim Tyler's a big guy to call it, so he saw him. Oh, steal by Regard off the inbound. Regard gets fouled, but he can't go. He'll shoot two at 110. Basically, we already threw him the inbound, Mike. We look more like Mars tonight getting to the foul line, huh? Yep, 13th turnover, by the way. This will be the 11th and 12th foul shot for Highlands in the first half. And then he took six the other day against Mars. Cam will get another. He's basically on the one out of two train. He's a pretty steady foul, sh foul shooter, too, Mike. Get, get a little more consistent there. Get it. He should be up in the 70s. Yeah, the second one got a nice forward roll for him. Yeah, none of the sophomores have done very well at the line so far this year. Yeah, Jordan only 54% and Braden 54%. Oh, nearly a steal. It's good job by Signorella. Forced the turnover, and Highlands gets it back in a minute. He had uh, Ivanchik in his sights, and... Ivanchik uh, saw that uh, large wingspan, Orlando, coming after him and lost his concentration, and it went off his hand. Back Long door. Back door to Regard. He got fouled. He did. Saved by Regard to Long. He missed the bunny. Oh, my goodness. Great but, save by Cameron. But great work by work, him. Yeah. Now near side, Ivanchik tries to get it to Moss. Great job by Long to get a piece of that and, and knock it off a Mustang. Rams. That was a great job by Khalil. And yep, Mark hustle. Marino is not happy, and he's going to make a change himself. 15 first-half turnovers. Highlands forcing 15 per game. So they're here, and we're not even halftime yet. 31 seconds ago before the half. Number 14 is Nate Yeoman for the Mustangs, and he's in the ballgame. He's got Khalil on him. And Tavares just walked right down Fifth Avenue but couldn't get it to go. Rebound long, no good. Rebound foul. Playing volleyball with it there, Mike. Jordan took a thumb to the eye that time. And Tavares will shoot two. 21 seconds to go. The Rams have their biggest lead at 19. They lead at 39-20. Moss gets his first foul. Mentioned Cameron 54% from the line. Jordan has yet to score tonight. That's his first. Seven guys on the score sheet so far here in the first half. You take that. Leary's the only man in double figures. He's got 10, but you got a good numbers uh, from Timmons and Kunst and Foster. Foster did all his work in the first quarter. 
So Jordan goes two for two. Rams will make some changes as Tavares will sit down and Foster comes in. 21 seconds to go. It's 41-20. Oh, they throw it away again. Saved by Favero nicely in the corner. And on the line. Goodness, another turnover for Plum. Now you can see where their problems are. Now, Corey Dodgson will get Jimmy Kuntz back in there with uh, one more chance at the basket. He had him on the bench making sure he didn't pick up a cheap foul. And, Mike, you're right. Most of these turns, it's unforced. They are. They really are. Bad night at the office for those guys. Here's Kuntz forecourt. Eight seconds. Spin move in Back the lane, off the glass, go, and Jimmy. shoots and scores. He's got 10. 43-20, they throw it the length of the court, and it's no good. The Rams with a big 23-point second quarter, and they lead it at the break. Highlands 43 and Plum 20. Well, B&J Sports is celebrating their sixth decade outfitting our local teams and the great sports fans of the AK Valley. When it comes to all your sporting goods needs, look no further than B&J Sports. Glenn Mills and his friendly staff provide that personal touch. Customized high school jackets, team uniforms, trophies, and plaques. Any kind of sports equipment, you just can't beat the service at B&J Sports. B&J is located at 1605 Freeport Road, Natrona Heights. They're open 9 to 5, 30 weekdays and Saturdays, 9 to noon. Or give Glenn a call, 724-226-2762. Six decades says it all. B&J Sports. A 23-point halftime lead says it all. Highlands 43, Plum 20. We'll be back with stats and more right after this. See the Rams warming up at halftime. They lead this game 43-20. Halftime stats will be brought to you by Mason Elite Hoops, training K-12 through at their good old-fashioned location at the Pittsburgh Mills Mall. So uh, Rams... Uh, Leading at 43 to 20, what do you got for numbers there, Dan? Yeah, Mike, Jimmy Quince leads with 10, tied with Carter Leary, Chandler Timmons 7, Braden Foster 6, Jordan Tavares 2, Cameron Regard 4, Khalil Long 4, total of 43 for the Plum Mustangs. Cameron Moss has done most of the damage. He leads all scores with 13. Ivanchik has 2, Harita has 3. Killinger has two. So other than Cameron Moss, Mike, we've basically controlled the Plum Mustang. Everyone has one basket. That's it. So I, I figured it out. I was talking about uh, official Jim Hastings here tonight. And he is a dead ringer. The actor's name is David Zayas. And he played Sal Maroney on Gotham. Look it up. It's it's stunning. The, 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 the Jim looks so much like David Zayas. So there you go. For all you Gotham fans, I, I'm going to guess you didn't watch that. No, I'm not a big uh, Marvel person. I, I do in reality, Mike. <laughs> well, you know me with books. I'm a I, I do not. I am a nonfiction person myself. So I, I like good biographies. I'm a biography guy. Crazy, crazy biography I'm still guy. Still enjoying yeah. the Beano Cook one. I'm up to page 120. I read two pages a night. <laughs> it puts me out. I got for Christmas this year. I got the book about the uh, history of the NFL today. The old with Brent Musburger and Phyllis George and Irv Cross and Jimmy the Greek and everything. So I can't wait to crack that one open. I got, I'm halfway through an Arnold Palmer book. I got to finish that first, and then uh, I got a Vern Lundquist book. Speaking of, I do the this year in between football and basketball. I read a great Al Michaels biography. It was tremendous. Al Michaels has never had a vegetable. How about that? He has French onion soup without the onions. Hmm. All right, inbound the ball for Plum will be. Griffin to Sean Franzi. We start the second half. Mustangs move right to left, dressed in their home whites. The Rams in the traveling. Browns and a steal by Leary. He drives. Pick his pocket. He lays. He scores. Carter Leary now. leads with 12 now. And the Rams lead at 45 20. And you got to keep your eye on the mercy clock now. 25 point lead. Remember, it's 30. The ball's kicked out of bounds. And Jim Hastings says it belongs to the Rams. Two quick turnovers. Starting five out there for the Rams. Foster, Leary, Kunst, Timmons, and Regard. Jimmy Kunst with the basketball. And a I could have called an offensive foul, Mike. They call Foster? No, they're yeah. calling Regard. Regard. And you gotta be looking to find that one. You didn't see that. All they're doing is setting down screens. See that's not a lot of action there, but he found one. Normally to get a whistle on a play like that, you gotta hear a body hit the floor. Yeah. Not, not close to it. Again, out of my view, so I'm not saying it wasn't a foul. It's just that I didn't see it. There's Franzi. We've been um, blessed here recently 
with some very good officiating. And that includes last Friday night's game. We were talking about that. Um, yeah, no complaints. And a couple of calls always either way, you know. But there's Ivanchik missing, and Leary gets it out of there. Leary had Kunst on his right. He had to wait for Killinger to get out of his way. That was any bad call I saw that day when Leary got poked in the eye. There was no call. Right, and the and the kick out on the three pointer yeah, by another uh, one. Other than that, yeah, by Schlegel, which you know, the old Mitch Desort play. Long Kunst, range, way boom. downtown, nothing but nylon. We get something away from the ball. 13 for Jimmy. I didn't see if they called a foul. They, no. Is it a warning or something? Was, Maybe yeah. somebody grabbed the ball coming through the hoop or something. Might have been, yep. Here comes pressure from Highlands. Now with a 28-point lead. Franzi, they get into a double team. Nearly poked away, but they do work it inside to Moss. Oh, he missed the bunny. You know, he's had a good night, but he's missed a bunch down there too. Had any offensive rebounds. He's got 15. Yeah, that's, that'll look really good in the paper tomorrow. Here's Timmons, drives all the way through. Nice. Oh, a good off. job. Yeah by Moss to get back on the defensive end and knock it out of bounds at Tavis Shore Basket. You yeah, look at Braden Tim is going to get that one for sure. College score, Mike, Miami 68, North Carolina 36. That they're good too. They're in first place. Down, yeah. Jim Laraniega. There is Foster. His first basket since the first quarter. He's got eight, and it's 50 to 22. But I'm talking about Carolina. One day they're killing somebody, the next day they're getting killed. Yeah, Miami in first place, though, right? I, you're right. And yeah. Jim Laranega took that as a retirement job, and he's actually done very well down there. Remember, he was a George Mason when they had the big upsets and got to the Final Four. If you're going to retire, Miami's a good place to go. I'm sure, you know, when he's when he came to the wife and said, we get a chance for the Miami job, she's going, okay, when do we go? You know. <laughs> Moss did a good job back in time. Missed the bunny again, Mike. Here's Timmons. To Regard. Back out top to Leary. Right side, Foster. Foster tried to get around Killinger. Bodied him up. And, and, draw, and draws the foul. Braden showed you some athleticism there, Mike. Hanging, drawing, and scoring. Third ram into double figures with 10. And that's 30 right there, Mike. 52 22. There it is. So Foster goes to the line for the first time tonight. Six different Rams have shot foul shots in this game. And that's the fourth foul of Killinger, Mike. Too strong. It went off ahead. They're going to get Foster over the back. He, he knocked it out of there, and I think it caught uh, Avancic on the back of the head. Oh, the, it is Foster. It's his second. And Mike, I guess it's at 30 because the clock is running. Devanchik. And once it runs, oh, it don't stop. Turned it over again. Different pages together, the Mustangs. And tried to get it to Oresik, and he zigged when Devanchik thought he was going to zag. Looping feed in by Tavares to Foster, and he goes in with the left hand and scores. Foster doing what he wants to down there tonight, Mike. Heck of a pass by Jordan that time, too. 54 22. Does it now for Braden. This is Moss in front of the plum bench. Franzi right side. Caught the spots out to get it. Now Arresa kicked it back to the corner and a three ball by Franzi. an air ball. Saved by the Mustangs, though. Shot is missed and Timmons the rebound. Out to Foster. The Rams are three on three, though. Foster with a spin move. No whistle. I think that was a good call. And You're now gonna Foster's going to get hit. Yep. Right. I think it might have been a little El Floppo on the previous one. Good no call there. Braden did kind of catch for the third foul. Going to get a timeout here. Gives us a chance to talk about the wireless zone, the largest independent Verizon wireless franchise in America. 5G ready to launch, Mike. Whether you're a small business, big family, or just need the phone, Wireless Zone can help. At the Wireless Zone, they're dedicated to find the right device for you, your family, your business, and your lifestyle. Our stores offer competitive prices on today's most popular smartphones, devices, and accessories with award-winning customer service. Stop in today and see what makes Verizon the world's largest and most reliable network. Get 5G ready and visit Wireless Zone headquarters in the Toronto Heights at the Walmart Plaza and at Pittsburgh Mills Mall 
or find Wireless Zone store near you by visiting wirelesszone.com. If, if you're really special, you can get the 5G ultra wideband. You get the UW next to you where the 5G is right there. Yeah. You get the UW next to that. You have ultra wideband. So well, that's I, new from Verizon too. I told you my story. I called about the uh, issue with gig. And they gave you and they gave you extra data. They gave you free unlimited data. Unlimited data. So you can check your scores at the gym now, like right now, for instance. And How are the Buckeyes was. doing, Dean? If the Buckeyes are beating IUPUI 52 to 28. How about that? No interest in that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do as a fan. <laughs> Chris Holtman doing a pretty good job there. I'll tell you what I had interest in, Mike. The middle school today played Rearview. And Rubio came in undefeated. Petey Foster. Ah! Bank won from about half court, off the glass, at a weird angle, and that seemed to be the tide turner there, and the Golden Rams were out to win, going away against Rubio. All right. Way to go, Petey. Sometimes cameraman Petey Foster. Yes. He may be, uh, we may be enlisting him again here soon. <laughs> yes, we can. Foul that time on Tavares, his third. Lit Khalil, the long arm of the law, reached in and stole the ball. Kunst. And on the alley oop to Regard. I don't have a call for that dunk. <laughs> Turnover 20, by the way. So what, is that on the floor? It is? Yes. It wasn't on the floor because he was in the air. So they really need another term for that. <laughs> Moss picks up his third. Here's Foster. Less than three left, third quarter. Regard missed a three from the corner, but Tavares is uh, on the weak side, and Kuntz is going to let it fly. That's an air ball. Rebound to Resic. Kotfus four court. They don't have numbers, though. He's going in anyway, and Foster did a good job to knock it out of bounds. Big game hunting tonight. Mike Fox Chapel at Central Catholic in 6A. Fox Chapel always a good team, and... Uh, Central Catholic doing a great job too in 6A. Dante DePanti. Get to see him maybe next Saturday, Mike. I told his dad we'd find a day where we didn't play and they did. They're hard to come hey, by. Hey, we get to see another coach from the Chuck Crummy tree on Friday. There's a foul is uh, heading in there was Nate Yeoman to the basket and he'll go to the line and shoot too. Sean Devinney, the new coach at Freeport, was uh, played and coached with uh, Chuck Crummy at Central Catholic. And I believe he had some time at Fox Chapel, too, Mike. He did. He was an assistant at Fox Chapel under Zach Scringer. Now, how about this? He started off as a teacher, quit teaching. He is a Pittsburgh firefighter. Interesting. <laughs> Nate Yeoman. I wonder how he manages his hours, Mike, because that's a... That's a tough one yeah. to get a time off. Yeah. Well, yeah, those are you 12 hours on, 12 hours off, a couple days a week, four... Yeoman gets another to try to cut this to 30. He does. The 6'5 junior. 150 to go, third quarter. Regard drives in, kicked it back to Tavares. Looping feet into long. Up around, it's no good. Rebound, Regard, in amongst the tall trees. He took that away from two of his bigger guys, Signorella and Long, said, I'll take that to get my sixth point of the night. 56 to 24, the Rams lead it. Stay tuned after the third quarter. We'll have unflooded trivia, and there's another rebound by Long. Out Off to Signorella, races. drives to the basket, and shoots fouled. and scores and draws the foul. Great outlet pass that time by Khalil Long, Mike, to Signorella, and he'll go to the line. Chance to complete the traditional three-point play. The Rams lead it 58 to 24. And do we get another timeout again? And I'll tell you about Planet Fitness at the Heights Plaza in Trona Heights. Your home of the judgment-free zone. Planet Fitness provides a clean and spacious environment where everyone is free to work out in a non-intimidating atmosphere for as little as $10 a month. And no better time than now to shed off those extra unwanted holiday pounds. Whether you're just starting out, getting back in the groove, or looking for extra tips. You can work out with a certified trainer at Planet Fitness at no extra cost with the PE at PF program. Memberships start as low as $10 a month. You can start off the year with high-quality fitness at an awesome price. Come down to Planet Fitness, Natrona Heights, and meet our friendly staff. Welcome to the planet. Rams leading at 58 to 24 over the Plum Mustangs as they, their uh, up and down portion of the season continues, and they're, they're bringing one back up here tonight after a, a downer on Friday. 
Mike, it was a tough week for us in the top five standings. We fell out uh, this week, and uh, top four is still the same. Laurel Hyde at 10-0. They're at Connellsville tonight. Newcastle 8-1 hosts Shar Valley. Mars 9-1, we mentioned earlier, hosting Plum. Penn Hills 10-1. They're at Woody High tonight, Mike. Woodland Hills. And Woodland Hills, surprise, is 3-1. They're in second place in that section. How about that? Gateway takes our place at the number five spot, but they're five and three. The Kromk has replaced the Kunst. Yes, and they're <laughs> hosting Franklin Regional, who upset Penn Hills. So uh, Penn Hills, again, leading the section. Woodland Hills, Gateway follows. Signorella, boy, halfway around the world, and then Timmons had a rebound, but it's blocked out of there. One minute to go. They're going to give the ball to Highlands. Another turnover, Mike. 56 seconds left on a moving clock with the Mercy Rule in effect. Well, I'd say the majority of our victories have gone Mercy this year. Yeah, man. It would be nice to win a close one or two, huh? Nice move inside with the left hand for Chandler Timmons. He's got nine approaching double figures. I think he has like four games in a row at double figures. His average up to 7.6. 60 to 24. 25 seconds left. Franzi. 34 is Aiden Stalnocker. And he gets it. Corner over to Yeoman. Now Stalnocker gets it back. 11 seconds. Steal by Regard. Great pass. Timmons ahead of the pack. Another great Dumps pass. Dumps it to Tavares. Beautifully oh. can't get it to go. Oh, it goes up. I think all four ramps. Other than the original shot, touched the ball and nobody could control it. It's the end of the third quarter with a score. Highland 60 and the Plum Mustangs 24. Hell of a four points that quarter, Mike. Well, we had a foot of snow, right, Mike? Eight inches. Yeah, well, got to go someplace, and hopefully it's not goes in your basement. But <laughs> if it happens to, if your home is damaged by water or mold, then call the people on Flooded. They'll help you out. They know what a stressful situation it could be, and our friends on Flooded are here to help. Broken pipe, sewer backups, flooding. They have the expertise to get your home dry and ready for repairs. When it comes to having mold in your home, they will come in, assess the situation, and put together a game plan for removing the mold and keep it from coming back. Visit unflooded.com or visit Brian Marr at 888-650-7767 any time of the day. And they bring in trivia tonight, Mike. And I mentioned Penn Hills earlier. They're part of our trivia question tonight. Okay. Okay, Penn Hills, Dark Horse in 5A, coming in at the number four spot. My question is simple. It's the numbers. You love numbers. Oh, yeah. How many WPL titles has Penn Hills won in the Penn Hills Indians career? And they've been bounced around. They were 4A, 5A. Remember, they had some great teams. Uh, Drew uh, Stofanos, I think his name was, he scored like 50 in a playoff game. So how many WPL titles for Penn Hills? Yeah, that's a tough one. We'll want to get a number for you here. We'll try to come up with. Okay, can we stipulate that it's not zero? That is correct. It's okay. not zero. In fact, I'll tell you, when their first one was, it was 1987 against Central Catholic. They won that one. How many in between there and today? Did they win when they had Drew Shafino? That's the question. They may have. They were down there. I, know I saw those guys. Oh, be, nice they pass. They plumbing a playoff game, actually. There's a. Uh, Turn around, jumper by Arif, Khalil. Khalil Long, yep, nice pass by Ali. And Khalil's got six. <laughs> Ali, it was great. He made the two three-pointers in the game last week, and then by the time we got home, he had already subscribed to the YouTube channel. You gotta love How about that Ali? Guy. You got to love that. Highlands High Sports. Subscribe, like, click the notification bell, help out our algorithm. And by the way, the game got up in 25 minutes on Saturday morning. I can't figure it out. They heard you. And I doubt it. I'm, I doubt that's it. I just, there was no music in the background. Maybe that helps. They're too busy trying to pop you for that. Codfus goes in, and we have a foul. Looks like they might be getting Cam again here. Yep. Cam picks up his third. Plum will shoot now. That is six on Highlands. This was a shooting foul anyway. Codfus will shoot two at 7.13. Clock stops to shoot the free throws. Rams lead at 62-24. Well, I came up with that question, Mike, is Plum and Penn Hills used to be in the same section. A lot of battles here. A lot of battles. Yep. We talked about last Tuesday up at Indiana, Ron Richards was the official, that, one of the officials that night. He was the longtime coach here. It's interesting. He, Hart Coleman took over for him here. 
and then Hart Coleman took over for Kelly Robinson at St. Joe's. <laughs> That's like, you talk about, Make you never want to fall with a man. He yeah. followed, Hart Coleman followed the man twice. <laughs> Signorella rips the rebound on. Ali. Ali Sharif for three off the back rim, no good. Might and get another one. Khalil Long's got a lot of rebounds tonight. This is Signorella right side. Tavares. Sharif. Hines has yet to commit a turnover in the second half, Mike. Euro step. Jordan Tavares in the basket. That's his best move, Mike. He likes to put that ball on his hip and carry it in. He did that time. He has down four. So, on February 14th, Valentine's Day, Plum's playing St. Joe's. It's the Hart Coleman Classic. You gotta love that. The Hart Coleman Classic. <laughs> I get it. On Valentine's Day. It's, it's perfect. It's the two, two teams he's coached playing each other. His name's Hart. It's on Valentine's Day. Right and a foul, and uh, it'll be at Spartan though. Tavares, nice passing along. He just took that one and ran with it. He'll go to the line to shoot a pair. Here's so we know. Okay, I'm going to say five. And I'm going to say you're off by one. Very good. Four championships. That's since a goodly number, yep, huh? 1987. Well, Golden Rams have two. Uh, 1995 and 2020. So uh, 25 years in between those two. Khalil makes his first. He has seven now. I have one for you, too, when you're finished with that. I get to talk about plum coach Mark Marino. He went to Lock Haven. Do you know what their nickname is? Oh, they're going to get Khalil, Khalil over the top there. Yeah, that was a definite uh, yeah. foul on Khalil there. Lock Haven. Mm, I would say the lockers, but that's a Their helmets are identical to Georgia Tech. Engineers? It says GT on it. GT. Lock Haven's helmets have GT yes, on it. Yes, they do. Golden Trojan. Golden Tide. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> Where did they come up with that? Like? I don't know. Gonna send Will Beckner to the line. Not to be confused with Bill Beckner. Bill gets a lot of play in the Valley now, Mike, because uh, we're getting all the Westmoreland Sports. And Bill, you get a lot of play in it because they're... Bill's the Bureau the, reporter. Yes, the, the Trib only has six sports writers total now, I think, is probably why that is. <laughs> Beckner makes two, and it's 65-25, and we have a whistle at the other end. Signorella had the ball. Let's see who they're going to get. In there for the Mustangs was Max Grice. It might have been him. I think you're right there. That'll be their fifth. So Hines will inbound the ball. Nope, it was on 34. It was Stalnacker. Now they're gonna, that should be that should not be on Khalil because he was pushed by Slaughter, Mike. And I'm gonna agree with Khalil there. If you take a look at it, guess what? The referees are discussing it. They should maybe just make that a uh, non-call. Yeah, they're gonna give it to yep five. I was right, Mike. Slaughter pushed Khalil into him, so how is it gonna rain, maintain possession? First foul on Darian Slaughter. Yep. There we a lot go. of these guys were out here for the JV game for Plum. And now uh, Vic's, Vic's, in, Vic's in the game. Vic had a tremendous JV game also. Dumped down along. Second trial count for Khalil. He's got nine, Mike, nearing double figures. And nearing his career high, 67-26. Stallmacher. Kicked it back outside, and he got it back. He let it fly, and he puts it down. Aiden Stolnacker for three. 67-29. Signorella. Nope. Tried to get it too long, but Slaughter tipped it out of bounds. Kyle will maintain possession. Francesco Vicariato will key it in. Vicariato. Milo taught me something. you got to say all the vowels. Everyone. Oh, what's wrong? Ah. They said he stepped on the line. No, they're going to say he threw the ball and it hit, and the, it hit line. the line. And it hit the line, okay. Yeah, bounce pass. First hot in his turnover the second half, Mike. Almost snuck it in. 
67-29. Less than three minutes to go. The Rams got to push their record to nine and four and five and one in section. Driving all the way through. Bodies all over the place. Kotfus couldn't get the basket to go. It's tipped out of bounds by Highlands. And the Mustangs will keep it. Jordan Tavares in a mercy rule game is taking charges, Mike. Yes, he is. Again, we mentioned uh, we will be at Freeport Friday night, and we'll have a girls game Thursday night. Burl against the Lady Rams at Highlands. We haven't done a girls game in a couple years, so it'll be nice to get back and see everybody there. Coach Jason Kerr. Maiden voice. Oh, that block by Vic. Vic all the way home. He lays it in. Vic Toronto gets his first two and makes it an even 40 point lead. Old school mercy. Yeah. Uh oh, Cody Huber. Fan favorite. Back there. Oh, again. another steal by Vic. Vic drives to the basket, got hammered, threw it up. He got fouled, though. And he'll shoot two at 138. He drew that foul. Hey, Mike, real quick, congratulations. Drake Burford, two-time Allegheny County wrestling champ at 145 pounds. Wrestlers are having a good year. His brother Aiden placed. Uh, he took fifth place at 126. Oh, the bank is open for Vic. Noah Leslie was fourth at 285. How do you like that, Mike? Braden White, fifth at 132. Uh, Brian Randolph took sixth at 152. Ooh. Cody chasing it down. Cody Hubert's in there. He is 50. And uh, Muhammad Sharif, 31. And Tyler Bender came in sixth at 189. And Dom Stobert, number five. Dommy. And Tommy Callender, 10. Good to see Tommy out there, Mike. He said he was hurt at the end of the JV game. I think that's everyone. <laughs> we like to make sure because game's played, you know. So at the line for the Mustangs is Devin Curler, a 6'2 sophomore. Mark Marino's cleaned off the bench, too. Oh, he gets a nice, friendly hometown roll. He'll get another. 112 remaining. Highland 70, Plum 30. Second one is good this time. Oh, they're going to say he jumped across the line. the line. That's a lane violation. No basket. He did the first time, too. Mike. Ah, okay. <laughs> Just well, if, he, if he doesn't get in much, I'm glad he at least got one of those. That's it. You're going to get Cody lined up to launch one here. Here's oh, Hubert. Want him to. Here's Vic Wright's left side. We need to get Dom on the board. Calendar. 55 seconds. Out of Muhammad. Vic steps back, lets a three go. Off the rim, no good. Rebound to Slaughter. Now they dump it inside to Curler. Back left side, that's Beckner. Three ball, left hander is down. Five off the bench for Will Beckner, and it's 70 to 33. I wonder if Will Beckner likes the Celtics like Bill Beckner does. <laughs> 20 seconds left. I might be content to bang this one out. I always said let him play, Mike. What the heck? Oh, nearly a pass to Huber, but it was stolen over there by Curler. Seven seconds. Inside to Grice, and they put it in. Is that Slaughter, I think? And that's it. That'll make it symmetric, make a double up. Hot in 70, plum 35. Well, Dean, uh, they get back off the Schneid coming off that loss the other night and uh, look good doing it here tonight against Plum. Yeah, Mike, onward and upward, go to Freeport, get a local rivalry, have some fun up in the Freeport area and get back in the section play next week. All right, yeah, we'll be at Hampton next Tuesday night to get back in section. All right, thanks to everyone here. Uh, Josh Shoup, athletic director, thanks to him. Thanks to cameraman Dan. Once again, that final score, Highland 70 and Plum 35. For the Dean Mike Choma, this is Mike Pavlik saying.